Welcome to Happy Talks with Dr. Alice and Donovan. Dr. Alice Fong is a holistic naturopathic doctor and founder of Amour de Soi Wellness. And Donovan Jensen is a software engineer and founder of HowToHappy.com. Together, they're out to cause more happiness in the world. Hi, everyone. Welcome to Happy Talks. Today, I'm really excited to introduce our guest today. We have Liz Bukley. She is the founder of The Smile Project, a nonprofit organization designed to spread joy in communities and educational institutions through Spark Kindness Clubs, birthday give back service projects, and more. In 2011, Liz started writing down one thing that made her happy every single day, and she hasn't stopped since. Liz has a professional background in the nonprofit industry and is passionate about youth empowerment and kindness. She enjoys writing, reading, traveling, and watching the pups at the Union Square Dog Park in New York City. Please welcome Liz. <laughs> Thanks Thank for joining you. us. <laughs> yeah, I'm excited for the conversation. Wonderful. Yes. So we're really excited to hear a little more about the Smile Project and how it started. Yeah, so it kind of started by accident, um, believe it or not. One of my favorite things to talk about with the Smile Project was how everything that it is was a total accident with no planning and no intention whatsoever. So when I was 17, um, I was driving home from high school in Western Pennsylvania, same like backcountry roads I had been on my entire life. And I had this very crystal clear thought going around one turn that I can still very vividly picture that was day one, happiness is those perfect car rides where the radio just plays all the right songs. Mm -hmm. Which was immediately then followed by a second thought of like, oh, we don't, people don't think like that, right? You don't think in terms of like day one, like normally you're just like, oh, this is a nice drive. And that's, that's the extent of that. But I remember having this very clear thought, like day one, right? So then like any 17 year old in 2011 who thinks they have an idea that's gonna change the world, I went home, logged into Facebook, posted day one, happiness is, you know, and then like did my homework and went to bed. Didn't think anything of it. The next day I was at the Costco parking lot in my hometown with my mom and our parking lot has like a slight grade to the parking lot hill. And so I was riding, you know, the cart down the hill and she's like, you're going to fall. You're going to hurt someone. So, you know, be careful. And this older lady across the aisle was like, oh, it's all right. My husband still does that. We like got back and, you know, we laughed and smiled and we got back in the car and I remember just being like, oh, well, that's, that made me happy. I, I, I could write about that. I'll, I'll post the day too. Um, the next day was Veterans Day. So this all started November 9th. So the third day was Veterans Day. And I was like, well, I'll make a post about that. And then the next day, something else happened and something else happened. And I was like, well, I'll just, I'll keep sharing little things of joy on my Facebook. I don't, you know, I don't know where this is going, but we're here. So we'll do it. And about two weeks in, I was like, okay, I think, I think I've covered everything. I talked about my cross country teammates. I talked about falling asleep with rain hitting the window. I talked about warm soup. I was like, cool. We, that was a fun little experiment. But right. then I was like, I don't, I don't know. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll post again. And so um, that was nine years ago. Today, which is June 16th that we're recording this today, I will post my 3,143rd consecutive day of happiness. And, you know, that, that was all it was for, for a while. It was just like, I'm just going to share what makes me happy on my Facebook and you know, what, what not. And I was a senior in, in high school, like I said, when I started this, and I remember being in gym class and people being like, what are you doing? Like, wh what is this? How, are you going to go to a hundred? Like, what, what's the plan? And I was like, oh, I don't know. I'm 17. I don't, I don't have a plan. I'm just writing things and whatnot. There was not really any, um, bigger idea for it. But after a while, people started to really be asking, like, why are you doing this? What does this mean? And so I was like, maybe, maybe it means something. And uh, just so I wrote the smile project down, doodled out a little logo and created a website and everything that has come from there all starts with this car ride in 2011. And um, that's kind of how the smile project was born. Everything that has happened since then has been an expansion of spreading kindness in this way. And yeah, that's, that's the backstory of a very accidental nonprofit organization. Yeah, no, I, I love that because, you know, they're, especially right now, 20, we're in the year 2020, and it's been quite the, <laughs> quite the year for, for all of us in a variety of ways. And, you know, people could get caught up in the news and the negativity and just like the hate and the, 
you know, craziness that's going on, but looking for those positive moments to smile about. Because if you look, they are there, no matter what's going on in the world, you can find them if you're willing to like commit to that. And, and you did, and you're still, wow, nine years? <laughs> that's pretty, that's pretty freaking incredible, honestly. My sister had done a 365 days of happiness challenge. Um, she's been doing that for years. And she's pretty consistent with that. And I actually attempted to do it last year, 2019, and I more or less succeeded, but I was not always consistent. But I started like realizing and noticing what makes me happy in my life and just paying attention to those little things as small as it is, like just, you know, someone opening the door for you, something simple as that, or, you know, saving me a piece of like cake. <laughs> something so tiny and it can really go a long way and make an impact and I'm just just incredibly impressed that you've been able to do that for for nine years straight without missing a beat because I I had some days <laughs> that I did not do that and it was a struggle sometimes I'm like I don't know if anything great really happened in my day no um, definitely yeah <laughs> that's definitely something I noticed where at first like I said two weeks in I was like okay I, I literally covered every single thing <laughs> in the world that there's like everything right? yeah and I, I noticed that came up pretty frequently in the first hundred days the first year the first couple years where I, it would be like 11 30 at night and I'd be like I'm not posting anything there's nothing good you know all of that but yeah. as the years went on eventually it became something where I just I knew I had to find something that day and so when you know like you're holding yourself accountable to finding something you just start to look for it and then you start to see it everywhere and so those days where it became like I don't want to post I don't I'm stressed this is bad all this stuff those became much like fewer and far between and yeah. i that's something that like a personal development side of things that i never really expected because i there wasn't a like there wasn't an intention of i'm gonna do this for the rest of my life it was just kind of like oh write one you know and uh, i think sometimes that's like the biggest thing you can do is just like i'll just do one mm -hmm. you know and then maybe tomorrow i'll do another one and you break it down like that it becomes a much more attainable right. thing absolutely yeah, I was curious if, so, I mean, there's, there's a, you, you started that project and you, you started doing those posts, but now you have like all these other projects and these other things that you're working on. So I'd be curious where the, where the bridge is between those things, or if you could give some more, fill in more of that story. Yeah, absolutely. So, so the Smile Project, like I said, I, for the longest time I was like, well, I'm just a teenager who's posting on my personal Facebook that's it, right? But people were like, we like this, like, do more, right? And I was at a leadership conference in Pittsburgh, actually, when I was 19 or 20, and I was speaking to them about the Smile Project and about this idea of sharing da daily joy, right? And I'm giving this talk, and I'm feeling like it's going really well. And as I'm getting ready to leave, a young man who was at the conference came up to me, and he's like, hey, I love what you're doing. I think this is really awesome. How can I be involved? And I just kind of looked at him, and I was like, oh, you can't because involved is just, I just, I just post Facebook stuff. I was like, there's nothing. That's, that's all this is. I don't know what to tell you. I was like, this is, that's not anything. Mm -hmm. And I went home and I was like, okay, that was a missed opportunity. And, and not only that, I was like, oh, people see this as more than what I do. Right. Because for me, I had my little journal and I just wrote them and then I posted them and that was it. But people were seeing this as, as something more. And that's the first time I think that it really clicked for me. And so I went home that night and started developing the SPARK program. So SPARK stands for Strengthening Positivity and Reinforcing Kindness. And they are our kindness clubs that can be started in schools. Um, middle through college is right now this kind of the school districts that we're in. And um, they're basically kindness clubs. So the idea is to empower the students where they are with what they have and the communities that they're in to go and spread kindness. So that looks different for every school, right? like what works at one of our bigger colleges doesn't work at our tiny high school. And that's really amazing because it's such a vague idea, right? Like a kindness club, but to see how each of the students interprets that. And even, even through the years as the, the leadership of the club changes, as people graduate, what the club prioritizes changes. So one group might do a service project with this community nonprofit and another group might decorate the halls for like the holidays and whatnot. And it changes every year. And it's, so it's really cool to see how everyone interprets kindness, but it's also really cool to have the opportunity to empower them to know that they can do something. Cause I think that was a big thing for me growing up was like, I want to change the world. I want to like do all this stuff. But then you're like, well, I'm in rural Western Pennsylvania. I don't 
have like a car. I'm 14. What am I like? I don't know how to like do anything. You just kind of sometimes, at least personally for me, I was like, I don't know where to start. Right. And so this idea of how this nonprofit started from a Facebook status of a 17 year old that can grow into more. I try to really make sure that our students recognize that like they have everything they need to make a difference right now where they are with what they have just by being like who they are and by caring. Mm -hmm. And so I'm really, really, really proud of the Spark program. That was kind of the first thing outside of, you know, we were like selling shirts that had like inspirational quotes on them and, you know, like little things like that. And then we would give the money to other charities. We were just kind of floating, trying to figure out what we wanted to do. But having that conversation at that leadership conference of like, I want to be involved that started the SPARK program really kind of put us in a new direction of where we wanted to focus. And so youth empowerment became one of our biggest values and something that we just really, really care a lot about. And with the background of starting as a teenager, it means a lot to me personally as well. That's the SPARK program. Um, that's probably our biggest, that is our biggest program. I always say that they're the heart and soul of the SMILE project now. Um, one, I'll share a couple things that they've done because I love bragging on their behalf. Um, Slippery Rock. Yeah, yes. So Slippery, we have two college clubs, Slippery Rock University and Westminster College. They're both in Western Pennsylvania. Mm -hmm. And Slippery Rock for, I think, three years now has hosted a free glow yoga class every year for the students. So they just bring in a yoga instructor. They give everyone like glow bracelet sticks and whatnot. And they just do like a free yoga class to de-stress. And they've done that every year now. So it's like a, such a fun thing that whenever I know they're doing glow yoga, it's like, good luck everyone, you know? And they, they prioritize things like having conversations about mental health, having conversations about taking care of each other and being there for each other and creating spaces for people to distress. So it's not just about, we're gonna go do kindness. It's also like, how can we take care of ourselves and each other as a club? So I, that's something that they do that I, I really like. And then Westminster College is our other college club. And the, so that's a really tiny college probably like 300, 400 kids each, each class. Mm -hmm. And so each year or in years past, they have written the names of every single student on these, like this big butcher type paper. And they hang it up in the student center with like a little compliment next to it. So it'd be like, Alice is always ready to help a friend. Donovan mm -hmm. is really good at biology or something like that. You know, like they would just be like, like real quick one liner things about every single person. It's really cool to see when they put these signs up, how people will just go into their student building and everyone's there, right? So it's community, it's connection, it's knowing that you're seen and heard and recognized. And other clubs are, we have a couple high schools that have done that as well. And that, that to me is just like one of, one of my favorite projects that, that I've seen them do. They're all incredible. Um, and I'm, <laughs> I'm really proud of them. Yeah, I would. Yeah, uh, absolutely. <laughs> I'm just, it is inspiring that you started this at 17, so you can kind of inspire these young minds that, yeah, they can accomplish anything at any age, really. I'm just curious, though, how would, like, if, if someone, like a teenager or a college student was watching this video right now, like, how would you propose to them in starting their own kindness club at their school? Yeah, so we have a little startup packet if they want to start a Spark Club and then be connected to the other Spark members, Spark leadership, whatnot. And if I'm, I'll, my email address, everything's out there and I can get you the Spark packet. And then we have kind of like a step-by-step -step guide of like, you need an advisor at most schools. Uh, here's your bylaws and constitution. All of that we have written up and you can change what you need to to fit your school or middle school or college or whatnot. But um for the most part, we tried to make it as simple as possible. So someone can say, here's what I need to do. Here's ideas for projects. Here's things other people have done, examples, trying to make it something that we can all learn and grow from one another. That's really cool. Cause I feel like, and part of the reason that I got into this space in the first place is you hear a lot of really cool or engaging or uplifting ideas. But then like you were saying before, especially, especially when you're in high school, but like, what do I do? Like, what is the thing that I'm supposed to do next? So it's really nice that you've built out some steps, uh, especially targeted for that group, because I think that'll really help people um, get started or like figure out what the first set of actions are to take. And then I think like with your story where you kind of started one thing and it evolved into this other thing, uh, I think most or at least a lot of projects start the same way. Like you just start doing a little bit of one thing. And then once you've built some experience, then it just other opportunities open up and other things just come together. So I think you really targeted like a really great 
piece. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. Appreciate that. I know that's helpful for me too, even now, like working on things. I'm like, I just need to break down exactly what I'm doing or else like this huge overarching project isn't going to get done. Like some new things that we're working on, like to write it in my planner is like work on the ambassador program gets me nowhere. But when I start to like, you know, section out what that looks like, that, that helps. <laughs> Do you or your team like support clubs in getting started or in addition to the packet? Yeah, absolutely. So I'm in correspondence with the clubs and the e-boards and whatnot. Obviously, the end of their school year this year ended a little bit differently than in the past. So I, I feel for them, but we're in contact and I always like to try to see what they're, what they're working on for the year and whatnot. So I'm, we'll have to see what happens this fall and hopefully. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I don't know. It's hard to, hard to even predict or say anything about that still. What kind of projects have they come up with like I guess this this year even though they didn't get to finish the school year in school like were there any projects around you know supporting each other in this weird time? Yeah we had um, one of our clubs was doing fundraising for COVID relief and so at first before things were really sent home we they were still trying to support those missions but uh, you know everyone was sent home and they some of them have been keeping up their social media which is nice to have some like online positivity and engagement there but it's it's tough when everyone's not together and for so many reasons because you know they're all distance learning as well and that is a whole nother factor for everything great and then I also um another thing that you had mentioned another project is the smile project road trip where you spent 56 days in the summer of 2018 spreading kindness what what did that entail so so before even before the smile project i'd always wanted to drive across the country and then as the smile project became a bigger part of my life i thought well what if we drove across the country and just used it as an opportunity to spread kindness so i'd been like talking about this for years and kind of thinking about it and finally in 2018 i was like i think i'm just going to quit my job and do it uh which you know <laughs> it was fine. So um, I was I was living in New York at the time and I was working at a great nonprofit and it felt like a really good time to do it because I was very happy with my job and my apartment and my life and everything was great. And so I knew it was a, a healthy thing to do because I wasn't running away from anything. It was just like, I wanted to do this. Let's go and do it. And so my best friend and I rented a car and we spent 56 days driving from, we actually got the rental car in Pittsburgh. So we drove from Pittsburgh all the way south, all the way west, all the way north, all the way east, across 28 states. And the original plan when I had talked about this was, okay, we're just going to do like acts of kindness. We're going to volunteer everywhere. It's going to be like that. But the more I got to thinking, I was like, okay, well, you know, if we have car trouble and we miss our appointment with Habitat for Humanity, that's, that's going to mess up, right? And so then I was like, okay, scratch that, right? I was like, instead, we're going to just do random acts of kindness. So we're going to, you know, buy people coffee and do like the, what people think of as like random acts of kindness. Then I was like, that feels, that feels really monetarily focused and also something that I could do in my neighborhood. And for obvious reasons with the Smile Project, we try to stay away from like the monetary focus things because we want it to be about like what you can do without mm -hmm. things like that attached to it, especially working with, with students. And so I was like, all right. Plan C, right? This is going to be so simple. I'm going to create this kindness map and we're going to work with all these organizations and it's going to be not about money, but about your time and your, your talent and your resources in, in that capacity. So we'll work with a nonprofit here who will do something. It's better if I give an example. All right. So in New Mexico, we worked with a group called Random Acts of Kind Trip and they helped us collect all of these supplies for an animal shelter. So we met with them. We packed up all the supplies in our car and then we drove to our next stop, which was in Arizona. In Arizona, we dropped off all of these supplies that we had collected to the animal shelter. And the staff there had written 50 uh, handwritten letter cards for veterans. So we passed off the cat litter and dog toys and picked up all these cards. Drove to our next place in San Diego and we passed out all these cards to a veterans nonprofit we worked with there. Veterans, meanwhile, had collected uh, school supplies for children, which we then took up to the Skid Row Learning Center in Los Angeles and dropped off all of those supplies. And we worked with the students at the center to create cards for a nursing home in Sacramento, actually. Oh. And so everywhere, it was like one group taking care of another in a cause space they aren't normally working in, right? Animal shelter to veterans place to um, youth center, but in a place they might never visit with people they probably will never meet, but just people taking care of people because they want to be involved in something bigger than themselves. And so we kind of created this web around the country of cities taking care of one another. And, you know, we did the one-off 
little kindness things. We bought coffee for people and we, you know, we uh, would go to like a food serving place in the morning. Sometimes we would do like little volunteer and kindness things. But the, the main idea was, can we show that we're more connected than we think and that people want to take care of people and people want to be good to one another. And uh, they did, <laughs> they did. It was incredible. I mean, we met just the absolute most incredible people everywhere we went. And um, mm -hmm. yeah, it was, it was really remarkable. I remember driving towards Seattle one day and saying like, Hey, we're, we're coming to Seattle and we want to work with, with your nonprofit, I explain what we were doing. He was like, all right, sounds good. When will you be here? And I was like, tomorrow. And he was like, all right, that works. Come by at 10. I was like, <laughs> wow, great. You know? Mm -hmm. And so we just got to meet all of these people who work across so many different um, areas of service. And it was just really incredible to just see people who care about making the world a better place. And um, yeah, that was, it was really great. <laughs> That's, that's awesome. It sounds like, you know, a lot of people, even spur of the moment, were willing to kind of contribute and, you know, pay, pay kindness forward. Mm -hmm. And it's incredible that, you know, it was serving one, one nonprofit or one organization would help an entirely different organization. <laughs> that's, that's pretty awesome. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was going to ask how hard it was to plan, but it sounds like you just kind of took a leap of faith and figured it out as you went. And I think it's a real testament to like just how good of people there are out in the world for you to be. Because I, I, that's what I was thinking is like, oh man, this must have been like a million phone calls, all <laughs> bunch of late nights. Like, yeah, you went for 50 something days, but you probably spent 200 something days planning it, but it doesn't sound like that was the case at all. So that's, that's extra cool. Yeah, I think, I think in hindsight, a little more planning wouldn't have hurt. Um, I, I joked that we, we, you know, I, I was working, I worked up until like a couple weeks before we left. And so I was working full time. I was, you know, finding someone to take my apartment. I was doing all of these things. And then all of a sudden I was like, I'm leaving soon. And I need to like make a map of these nonprofits. You know, I had, I have friends who are, who run nonprofits in certain places that I knew I wanted to work with. I knew I wanted to connect with, but then there were like, I'd never been to South Dakota. I don't know anyone in South Dakota. And I was like, well, here we go. We got to figure this out. And uh, we ended up working with an incredible group in South Dakota that I just got connected to through another kindness organization. And so this idea of um, people just really coming together was, was so front of mind the entire trip. Um, but yeah, it was also, I don't know why I thought that this map part would be easier than like anything else because it was extremely complicated in the sense of like, we're going to be arriving with cat litter. Anyone in Arizona? Like, you know, it was very just like, I will give you the cat litter, but you need to write cards for, but you know, and, and so it was, it was almost like this puzzle um, trying to put it all together while driving and, you know, making sure we had somewhere to stay and all of those kind of things. And I, you know, I'd been in New York for three years, I think, by the time I left. And so mm -hmm. the idea of like driving regularly, it was like, I don't even want to like, that. Just, I, mean, I hadn't, hadn't driven in a very long time. And so that was like its own little like personal challenge in addition to um, the coordination of nonprofits. But it was, it was, um, it was a really special time for sure. I think there's really something to be said for and multiple of your stories exemplify this, but just trying stuff, just going for it. Like, I guess there is a scenario in which things in both situations could have turned out badly. Like you could have just left and not known how to drive and then been stuck for 50 days or, or whatever else. But I, I really think that a big piece of it is just like taking the first step and just going for it and then figuring things out as you go. And I feel like, there's a lot of people who get super nervous uh, about like, like, like when you said, I thought it'd be a good time to leave because everything was in order. I feel like it's almost the opposite of how many, many people think, which is like, wow, this really sucks. I have no other choice. I'm just going to quit. But like, I, I love that mindset of like, okay, things are settled. I feel good. I can take on some other new project. And it sounds like it's produced a lot of fruits for you in terms of like experiences and other opportunities. And I just, I think it's super cool. I wish more people would do step out and take challenges more willingly because I feel like it just opens up your ability to take on other things. Like I'm sure you learned from having to figure it out on the fly a bunch of skills that will be useful for you in future projects. 
Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I appreciate that. And I will say I was uh, absolutely terrified. Like the, the night before we left, I remember I was in my, my, the house I grew up in. Right. And I was, we had our car, rental car in my parents' driveway. And I was like, I don't, don't genuinely know that I can do this. Like, I just like, I remember like not sleeping that night, not because I was worried about like the nonprofits. Like I knew like that, I was like, that will, that'll take care of itself. I was personally so like paralyzed by this idea of driving. And I remember I was like, I'm going to drive. Like the first day was one of our longest driving days too. And I was like, I got to drive first. Cause I just like got to get it out of my system. Right. And so we drove until we like stopped for lunch and to get gas in West Virginia. And then we switched drivers. And I remember like sinking into the passenger seat and just being like, I can't do this for 55 more days. I was like, if we turn around, like I was, I was so, and it sounds so like dramatic in some ways, but I just like, I had never driven much growing up. I, I moved to New York City when I was 21 and didn't drive then, obviously. And like, it was just so outside of my comfort zone, even that sounds so silly even to say, but I remember just being like petrified. And then by the time we got to Texas, I was like, do you know how cruise control works? Like, this is great. Like I was like a whole different person, but like absolutely was so much self-doubt in the first day, especially just of like, we could just turn around. Right. Just cause like that was so outside of my comfort zone, but I appreciate, I appreciate that sentiment a lot. <laughs> I would be curious what your, what your process was for, or like how your thoughts went in that time, right? Like, cause, cause you could have, like you said, easily gone the other way. So what was it that pushed you? Cause I, I, you know, I think a lot of people get on the edge and then fall the other way. So like, what do you think made it so that you were willing or able to continue on with it and, and get through that fear? That's a really good question. Um, I think, I think a lot of that, honestly, a lot of credit to that goes to my co-pilot. So I drove with my best friend from college and I think like we just know each other so well that I wouldn't even have to say that I was really scared and they like knew because it definitely, we definitely hit a point when we switched drivers on the first day, it was not halfway through the driving of the day. And like I 100% should have offered it like at some point that night to like drive again and I didn't. <laughs> and I think, I think he knew that like I was really like nervous about this. And I think having someone around who just gets you and is able to like talk through these things or even not talk through them, but just kind of know that like, okay, it's not all on me. Like I have at least one person, like at least in the case of the road trip, right? I had one person who I was going to be with for two months and having that be someone that was reliable and trustworthy and that I just feel like I can, I'm allowed to be nervous or scared or whatever I'm feeling. Um, that, I mean, that's probably one of the biggest things that, that made the trip successful and also made me keep driving to to North Carolina you know um because I definitely was doing the math in my head of like if we drive back but I mean it also at that point I have you know a little bit of stubbornness so I was like well I said I'm going I'm going you know and so I think that part of just um stubbornness too is, is probably a big part of it <laughs> it turns you well clearly I know that um we've talked about it before but like external accountability for us like that's the reason that we have a two person thing going on right now is because in the past it's been harder to stay motivated or like push through or be consistent and i think it's so useful if you can find someone who has uh, you know like a similar interest or or someone you just know and connect with some anyway any kind of support that you can get i feel like you're so much more likely to finish out a project so that really resonates cuz that's that's exactly what we're doing right now Mm -hmm. No, absolutely. And I know that with the Smile Project, so I started it at uh, 17 and then, you know, was then I went to college and I moved to New York and all of these things. And it was always just like myself running it. And so when the Spark students came on, incredible group of, of people on our team, but at like what I call Smile Project HQ, which is like my apartment, um, I, it was always just me. And so that's, that's great in some ways, but then also it's like, oh, like I'm tired. I'll do that thing I was going to do tomorrow. Right. And this is the first year. Um, we have a couple program managers that just joined to, to help build out some programs a few last month, two months ago. I don't, time has become weird for me, um, who recently joined to help us build out some programs. And it's been really cool to work with both of them and be able to kind of say like, here's what I'm working on. Here's what you're working on. If I don't do my part and like, it just, it's been really cool to, to have other people working on certain programs that we're building out. That has been a huge thing for accountability for me having kind of always just run this as like this little nonprofit I run and be like, no, we could, we could be more. We just need to have a good team around us. And we, we do. And so it's, it's yeah. really great. Right. Cause you know, who knows like 
as your team grows. That's something I've had to learn myself in doing various leadership programs and, you know, me getting over my control freak nature of like wanting to do it a certain way and really kind of like giving that up and seeing like, what is my, my bigger mission? And it sounds like your big mission is just to spread kindness to the world. And that's something that resonates with a lot of people and they're on board and they have all these different ideas that maybe you would never even imagine that they can contribute, but it's kind of like giving up your, yourself. <laughs> Not, well, yeah, or just kind of like letting go of the control for the bigger picture and that can really expand things. And like some of the projects I did involve like just reaching out to people I didn't even know. And mm -hmm. I was like, just pick a wild guess, <laughs> see if they want to be involved, if they're inspired by what I'm up to. And, you know, some yet said yes, some said no. And it turned into things that I just wouldn't even imagine because I was able to kind of like get out of the trying to manage it all myself. Cause that, that is one of my own tendencies is trying to like do it all myself. And I realized that's not the most effective way. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. But it's, it's funny that you mentioned that as well, because I, you know, for the longest time I fell into this trap of like, sure, we're like this nonprofit and we do these things, but I was for a long time, very much boxed myself into like, I just post Facebook statuses. I'm a teenager. And then I was like, no, you're 25 and run a nonprofit. You need to like act like it, you know? And so kind of coming out of that mindset was really helpful. And um, like, for example, on the road trip, it was the first time that I was kind of sharing a lot of responsibility with someone. And so that was, that was very strange for me at first to, you know, we're not, forget the driving part. I was like, oh, I also have to like, <laughs> we're like, this is now you are representing the smile project. And that's also like, which sounds like, like you said, like, it's a very control thing that I was like, oh, I, I'm just, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was, it was fascinating to kind of see how I, how I didn't think I would struggle with that, but I did at first of like, oh, I've done everything by myself for years and, and, but this is great because I can't do everything by myself and you know the project better than anyone. And so we're going to do this and it's going to be great. And like being able to let go of some of that because I didn't have a choice because we're driving and calling nonprofits and calling the news and doing all these things, you know? And so kind of giving over some of those responsibilities just changed everything on the trip. As soon as I was able to be like, yeah, I know you're capable. I wouldn't have asked you to come. Like if I, if you weren't like, we're going to be fine. You do your thing. I'll do mine and we'll work it out. That was a cool feeling to like cross that threshold of like, you don't have to do everything. <laughs> like, so. How did it impact your, your relationship with your, your friend? Because I know I've, I've done two cross country road trips for moves. <laughs> one was with my brother, one was with my significant other. And it was testing our relationship in a lot of ways. It's like, yeah. how did you navigate through that <laughs> and it's come out on the other side? <laughs> Yeah, you know, barely. No, um, I, I was joking with my friends before we left. I was like, yeah, my, I'm going with my best. Like people say, who are you going with? And I'd say, I'm going with my best friend from college. It's like the best person or the worst person will know by Virginia. Like that was the joke, right? Virginia was our first state. Uh, and so, um, but it ended up, it, it was really phenomenal. So I moved to New York right after we graduated and he stayed in Ohio. And so I hadn't like really seen, like physically spent time with him in a couple of years at that point. And so to go from like, we'll call on the phone and catch up to like, I'm living with you for two months straight and only you was definitely an adjustment. And I, um, yeah, I, I think I had some less than fine moments um, of just like road trip stress and nonprofit, all these things that I was like, I, I can't do this. But I, you know, I'll tell him at the end of this day, he was like the best person we could have, I could have done the trip with. And uh, we worked really well together and like, that's not to say I wasn't like, can you put the tent up quicker? Because I was, um, and that's not very kind. <laughs> but um, overall, it was just, we fell into rhythms, we fell into patterns of things that worked. And um, he cares so much about the Smile Project. He cares so much about the work of kindness and happiness. And so to have someone like that, who's number one priority, like, he was like, this is great. I get to see the country, you know, but he was like, but my number one priority is helping you and spreading kindness. And so to see him really dive into that, mm -hmm. um, that was really, really special for me. Um, because in addition to just like being my best friend, I was like, I know you care about this and seeing you grow through that, um, was really cool. Yeah. I'm going to switch topics a little bit, but I have a question in terms of, so, so it sounds like things have been going well so far. Things are going good, expanding, whatnot. What is your ideal 
next couple steps? Like what, what, what do you want to see happen with this project? Or if you have a different project in mind, like if, if it's kind of hit where it's hitting and you want to work on something else, I'm just curious, like what are the next couple things you see coming down the pipeline? That's a great question. So I will actually talk about the two programs that we have people helping us out on right now that I'm really excited about. So the ambassador program that I kind of alluded to earlier um, is something that I've wanted to do for a really long time because when people are like, how can I get be involved, right? We do like service projects here and there and we um, have the SPARK program, but if you're not in school, you're not a teacher, you're not like wanting to help out on just like a one-off project, you wanna be involved. I was like, there needs to be some other way for people to, to be involved with the SMILE project. And so I'm working with someone right now to build out our ambassador program. And the idea with that is really goes back to the whole idea of happinesses. And so helping people to go on that journey of writing down daily joys and building that out into something that people can feel like they're part of a community. And we're, we have the blog online. So we have all this content that we want to share with people of like looking for something good in every day is not easy at first at all. Right. It's sometimes not easy now. And especially with so many things going on, it's there have definitely been times in, in the past couple months even where I'm like, is this even appropriate to look for something good, you know? And so in spite of all that, right, we're starting to build this ambassador program where we're going to encourage people to share daily joys. And actually one member of our community, today is her three year anniversary of posting happinesses. Um, and so I'm super excited for her. I'm super excited for the people we've gotten to work with in the past. And I'm really excited to build this out into like an official program that people can really get come together under like a sense of community for our ambassador program and share their joys together and encourage other people to do the same. So that's one thing that I'm really excited about. And the other thing is the birthday give back program, which I didn't talk about yet. Actually, that's something we do every year. The backstory on that is uh, when I was in elementary school, I went to a friend's birthday party, but she said like, instead of gifts, she wanted people to bring donations to the local humane society, which I thought was like brilliant. Right. So I like, you know, went and got like dog food and toys and all that kind of stuff. And I just sat there and watched her like open all these like, you know, paper towels and things like that. And I was like, that's so cool. Right. So then when my birthday came around, um, a few months later, I was like, I'm gonna do the same thing. Right. That's such a good idea. I love this. And that idea just like always stuck with me of like, what if you could use your birthday to bring joy to other people? And so it became like kind of like an official program with the smile project four years ago. So my first birthday in New York uh, would have been turning 22. And so I had the day off. And so I spent the whole time going around and getting all of those freebies that you get on your birthday, like free Starbucks coffee, free donut, whatever, all those things. And we were just giving them to other people. So we'd like go into Baskin Robbins and be like, hey, were you going to buy an ice cream cone right now? And they'd be like, why are you talking to me? One, we're in Manhattan. And two, uh, I guess, you know, and so I'd be like, cool, I'm going to get that ice cream for you. So we were like doing little things like, which was great. Cause at the time I'd moved to New York, uh, five months prior to that. And I had like, was working a lot, didn't have a lot of money, but still wanted to like do something. I was like, this is an incredible way to like be creative and give back when you don't have a lot to give financially. Right. So that was my first, um, time we like really did it as a smile project program. A couple years later for my 24th, birthday in New York, we're like, we're going to spend 24 hours straight volunteering in the city, which was like, even that was the, that was about a month before we left on the road trip. So we left for the road trip on June 23rd on May 20th. So just like a little bit before we, um, spent 24, our friend and I spent 24 hours in New York city, like volunteering at two different food kitchens, cleaning up a park, uh, delivering over like 700 homemade cookies, like all of these like things, midnight to midnight. It was so much fun and also so exhausting. <laughs> and so that this kind of idea of like, what can you do on your birthday to spread joy? Mm. In the past two years, we've asked other people to help. So uh, last year was 25 cities, 25 acts. We wanted to get 25 people. It's always like somehow based off the age, right? And so uh, we tried to get people to um, commit to like one act of kindness, wherever they were. And um, we got 39 cities, I believe, across six countries and four continents for that. And so I was like, oh, this is great. Like people want the chance to be a part of something bigger and, and we just need to give them that opportunity. Um, this year was really different because most of the country was in quarantine, I believe still on May 20th. And so we did uh, a list of like 26 ways you can share digital joy. And so we created this list and encouraged people to share the list and then also do something from the list. And it was really cool to again, see people like really respond to that and be like, I want to do this. And the other, so that's one part of it, right? People are like, ah, this is so cool. I'm going to participate in your birthday give back. 
And then the other part is people go, well, I want to do this for my birthday. And so we're building out right now this, this official, more official, I should say, program where people can register their birthday and sign up. And so we could see like, oh, looking at the August calendar, this person's birthday is on the second and they're asking that everyone does X, Y, Z. I can do X, Y, Z and I'm going to, you know, use their hashtag and participate in their birthday get back. So we're building out that program so that other people can have the opportunity and kind of like similarly to the spark clubs, they have a little guide of like, here's how I organize my birthday get back. Um, so I'm really excited about that one. That one's like really personal for me as well. Just it's something I've done my entire life. And um, I'm really excited to see other people who have done similar projects, be able to like officially join the birthday get back program and, and share more joy that way. So those are two big areas that I'm working on right now with the ambassadors and the birthday get back. And I have a really great team helping me. Yeah, I, I love that idea because I think that definitely as we get older, I'm like, I don't really need more stuff. Right, yeah. <laughs> we have enough stuff. Yes. And it was just like, I don't even really want any presents for mm -hmm. myself. I, I, don't, I can't speak for everyone, but for me, I'm like, I don't need more stuff. Usually I probably won't even use that. So the idea of just you know, but using my birthday, because I do want it to make it about me, but also, <laughs> <laughs> totally, totally. <laughs> but I like, I want to like spread good and joy and kindness in the world. And so not, why not use my birthday as an opportunity to, you know, help that along? Yeah, I think that's a great idea. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate yeah. that. Yeah, I might have to steal that for my next one because I ever <laughs> since I graduated and got a job and it's like, here's some stuff. And I'm like, if, if I want something, I can just buy it now. I have one. <laughs> before that, before that is different. Before that, I was like, yes, I need stuff. Free t-shirt. Oh, Come on. Free. Yes. Awesome. I'm going to starve if I don't get something. But now, yeah, it's just like, right. I don't, I, I can buy the things I want. And also, what if you give me something I don't want? Which makes me feel even worse. Like I would rather you just give someone something they need than give me something I don't want. So I might, I might steal that for my my next birthday. That's a good idea. Yeah, I hope you, I love birthdays too. So I'm all about like anything we can do. Like as soon as it hits May, it's like it's my birthday month. Like the whole month. <laughs> but I'm a big birthday fan. Yeah, I'm all about you know having having positive experiences. I'd rather much have a better, like a positive experience versus like more material things. So, you know, this would fall in line of just, you know, being able to spread joy. And when I think about something that just like resonated with me, when you mentioned the idea of giving back for your birthday was like moments when I felt low or depressed or kind of sad when I focus so much on myself, it doesn't always like get me out of that, but when I'm actually like in service of others, that gets me out of my mood or my funk like way faster than just like focusing on how how crappy I feel right now, <laughs> which is not like to say that's invalid to feel like that and it's okay to feel like that. But just like for me, I know getting out of that mindset is the fastest, quickest way is just like being there for other people. And it just, yeah. <laughs> No, absolutely. That's, and even, even like on a much, much smaller scale than that, I, I remember we, my friend, it was actually one of our former Spark presidents who came up to help with the 24 hours that we were doing the give back in New York City. And we went to sleep from like 1030 to like 1150 the night before. We we're like, we should like take a little nap, right? So we went to sleep for like an hour. And my alarm went off at like 11.55, right? My first thought was like, all right, you don't have to do this, right? Like that, immediately, I was like, you do not have to do this. This is like your one day off this week and you're going to spend the full time. Like, what do you, I was like, this, like, you could do four hours, four hours, 24. That's like fine. You can do eight hours, four times two. Like, like you don't, and like, as I was going through this inner monologue, I was like washing my face and like getting, like I already like had made the decision, but I just like needed to grumble about it for a second. And as soon as I was like, okay, cool, like, we're going to this, this uh, shelter in the morning to serve breakfast and we got to be there in six hours. So here's what we're going to do before that. And like, blah, blah, blah. And it just getting into that mindset of service, just like, it's not about like, I'll, I'll sleep the next day. Like, it's not about that. Like it's going to be fine. And it, and it was, it was one of the, it was an incredible, it was, that's one of my favorite birthday give backs. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Sounds like the positive version of my experience with alarms every day. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Great. Well, is there anything that we can do as the host of Happy Talks to like help spread this mission of yours further? 
Yeah, um, I'll share links to all of the programs and things that I talked about for you guys to. to okay. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Everywhere. Uh, and, and just stay tuned. Y'all can be ambassadors. Y'all can do birthday yeah. give bags. I mean, we're we're getting going on those things. And so it'll it'll be um, exciting to really officially launch those pretty soon here and hope that lots of people want to be involved with them. So. Well, great. Yeah, we'll put all those links in our description when we post the video. So yeah, we want to, was there anything else that you wanted to share just before we wrap up today? No, I think, I think that's good. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, well, thank you so much for being our guest and just thank you for who you are for the world and for people and just spreading the mission of kindness and happiness. It's so important and it's just really inspiring everything that you're up to at such like a, since being a teenager to like now, that's really, really incredible. Thank you. I really appreciate that. I really do. Great. All right. Well, thanks everyone for watching and we'll see you next time. Thanks everyone.